Okay, cool. So it does come up. I guess I'll just give it a sec. I'll give it a sec to kick on, I guess. I don't know. That's so weird. But, sick. Okay. I am live on Twitch. That's so weird. And I am Sick. live okay. on Facebook. Sick. I am or uh, live, on, live on YouTube. And I am Sick. live okay. on Facebook. Sick. Watch. And and let's see if I'm live on Facebook. Excellent. All right. I'm live. Let's friggin' go. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> the only downside is I have no idea how to manage the uh, chats for all of this. Um, but we will figure out that problem. Hey, something just happened. I think someone did something. <laughs> Here, let me move myself out of the way of chat. Sweet. Okay. Let's make chat box bigger so I can actually see what you guys are saying too. Okay, cool. So are you still with LATG? I am not. I still love the dudes though. So definitely support the band. Uh, and how did you get the template? I actually built this template. Um, so I've been recording for over a decade. So this is just a basic starting template that I use for a lot of my projects, especially if I'm gonna be recording myself. Um, and this is also the stream uh, the stream portion of uh, my rig. So down here I have basically have all of my live mics feeding into their respective channels. And uh, from here it will go through various processing um, and basically routes through a submix. And then from there it'll either go to stream or go to my in-ear setup. So uh, it's a little bit different. Hey Jordan, thanks for popping in, dude. Um, but yeah, so trying out this new kind of simultaneous stream thing, uh, we will see if it works or if there's anything I can do that's, you know, makes it easier and better. Uh, but yeah, so for today, I wanted to just kind of go through the process. I was going to be in here by myself doing this anyways. So I figured I'd live stream it and kind of answer questions if anybody has anything and uh, just go from there. So I've been, like I said, I've been producing music for over a decade now, I think 13 years to be exact. And uh, I've been playing drums for going, I think it's nearing two decades uh, next year. Uh, so I've written and played and recorded tons of music over the years. And uh, today's is from a buddy of mine. His name is Wade. Uh, he sends me tracks every now and then to write and record drums. And he will then rework them into original songs, get vocalists, re-record guitars and bass and all that stuff. And uh, basically just go from there. Uh, so this is like ground level. This is He just sent me a demo, uh, one with and one without vocals. And I will be using it as the references to just write drums. There's no drums on these. I'm going to just come up with all the parts myself. And uh, if you guys hear anything that sounds cool along the way, you're more than welcome to chime in as well. And, but real quick, I'm just going to pop into the other room. So I'm going to get rid of both of these displays. Cool. All right.
All right. Hello, I am back. Fernando, what was your first impression of Red? Uh, that was that song that you submitted uh, last drum stream, right? Uh, it was actually really fun. It gave me a lot of like new metal vibes, um, which is you know something that I'm familiar with, and uh, yeah, great overall. Uh, I had a lot of fun playing along to it, and uh, yeah, I really appreciate the suggestion. Uh, I really dig when you know you guys submit fun music. <laughs> it just makes it a lot easier and funner for me to be able to like kind of go off on it and do my own thing. Um, so it's really cool in those instances. Uh, here, real quick, I'm just telling Chelsea I, I went live. And lastly, I just need to verify that I am live on Facebook, or not Facebook, uh, Instagram. I guess there's no way for me to do that, huh? All right, cool. Yeah, so I'm basically just going to be setting up this song. If you guys have any questions along the way, feel free to submit them. Actually, let me turn off uh, Nightbot <laughs> for the YouTube crowd. I'm just like, what's the point of opening it up on my top screen if it's not going to... Yeah, still got some timers enabled from... Uh the last stream for the blindfolded thing which seemed fun i had a couple people hit me up after the fact uh, that said that it was uh they enjoyed watching it so if he did i appreciate that and uh maybe i'll do it again soon those were fun so turn off the blindfolds and uh yeah if you guys want to donate through stream labs or anything um link will appear from time to time uh but yeah so without further ado let's just go ahead and jam the song uh, this is the instrumental mix. Uh, what I'm first going to do is create a region for the entire song. Uh, the name of the song is Pulls Me Down. And I did give it a quick glance earlier. Uh, so it's just going to be a... A, like, a kind of orchestral, kind of heavy guitar thing. <laughs> So right off the bat, we have a couple of different sections. We have a instrumental orchestral section uh, right to start the song off. We have like this kind of turning rift is what I'm going to call it. <laughs> then it transitions into like a full strum kind of vibe. Thanks for popping in, Jordan. Appreciate you stopping in.
So we basically just have like this long intro uh, progression and through and probably like a teaser for the first verse and chorus. Uh, so it seems like the song really starts to open up right there at about 120. Uh, so let's see. This is just. What am I going to call it? Cool. So this is like that melodic open again. Okay, so the reason I give stuff the same label, name and label sometimes is so that um, I can then color code them and match them to the corresponding sections. Uh, so if there is, you know, like this melodic opening section that kind of walks down. <laughs> has already been brought back over here, so I don't necessarily want to play like conflicting rhythms uh, if it is going to like make it sound weird. Uh, but yeah, we'll get to that here in a sec. Uh, this whole first phase is just getting everything laid out. cool so we have like i don't even know if they are triplets it's just the first thing that came to mind so i'm going to mark them down as triplet opening <laughs> sounds like the song is starting to open up and then we have like these accent guitars that i want to follow <laughs> So that's like a turning down. So I suspect that's strumming. Yeah, cool. So we have that strum coming back and the intro initial turning rift coming back with a little bit more orchestral elements underneath it. So we have that same turning rift coming down. So we will just stay on that. It's not the turning B2, it's like another. You know, they sound very similar, but I need to make this uh, distinction so that when I'm writing the drum parts, I'm not writing the same drum parts for different turning riffs, if that makes sense. Um, hey, do you know how to get a trigger setup recognized in a DAW? Um, I'm actually, I think, in that particular instance, um, I think it would just depend on your trigger module, actually. Uh, some of them have direct USB connectivity, um, so you can typically just go out of the USB port on your trigger module and have it go into, uh, here, I'm going to move chat real quick because it's like overlaying on top of me. Uh, here, we'll just move you guys to 
the dead center for now. No, that looks awful. Here, I'm just going to move you right on top of me. I'll move this back. Uh, but yeah, so... I'll make you guys a little bigger, too, because I have all of the chats coming through here. Um, okay, so how do you get the trigger set up recognized in a doll? So basically, you're going to USB connect your trigger module to your computer, install any of the drivers associated with that. In Reaper in particular, you just go to Preferences... Um, I think for us, it's under MIDI devices. And then if your trigger module has been correctly installed, it should pop up in this list. As you'll see, I have a couple different things that I use in here in the studio to work. Um, so I basically just enable them or disable them if they're connected or not. And that should give you uh, MIDI capabilities with your drum module. And from that point, you are basically just going to open up like contact or superior drummer or whatever and make sure that your MIDI corresponds to what you're trying to trigger. Um, are you setting markers? Uh, so in, in a sense, yes. Uh, so these in, in Reaper, they're technically called regions. Uh, so I am basically just creating regions for each separate part of the song. And because of that, uh, it'll then pop up on my, phone side as like uh well you guys will see it when when i'm actually in there but there's like a mobile app that accompanies reaper and by creating these regions i can then view the regions on my phone and just quickly tab to each the beginning of each section and so it's really easy for me to just be able to record myself without having to run back in here to trigger the recording sequence i just hit the button on the mobile daw controller and it's ready to go I'm using Ableton. I'm trying to get my Alesis to recognize. I have a connection through MIDI, through MIDI to my interface. Um, so in that case, whoa, thank you for the like. Um, in that case, you're basically just going to treat... Um, I've done that before as well. So you would just do your MIDI inputs coming out of your uh, interface and use that. So on Reaper as well, you can select the input over here to any of your corresponding stuff. So if you've installed it and everything, you can just say, uh, what interface? Yeah, I don't know what interface you're using, but if you did install your interface drivers as well, it would basically pop up here as like, MIDI inputs, and then from there you could select the specific channel that you're on, or all channels. Uh, on my particular system, I like to just do all channels, because I'm only ever recording one thing at a time. And if uh, I select specific channels, sometimes I, they just won't be recognized, so I just do all channels to make it, uh, make it easier. I'm just here to see Fern's pee-pee. Oh, hey, Thomas. <laughs> no pee-pee on this stream. <laughs> Okay, cool. And then just strictly based off of length, I'm going to go ahead and assume that that's... Nope, chorus. Yeah, sorry, I have, uh, so the way I have the stream routed right now, I'll just turn myself up a little bit more. Um, I wasn't sure what the balance was like. I'm going to have to double check that when we start drum tracking as well. Um, but yeah, so we have these two sections that are similar to other sections from earlier. Yeah, so that's the same melodic, like, opening kind of rift, uh, followed by, I think the chorus, uh.
Yeah, the only difference is that this just has more orchestral elements uh, within the actual like chorus. I don't know. I'm I'm really just listening to the guitars because that's what I'm going to be using to base my parts off. <laughs> real quick I just want to verify that that is in fact and you'll see why that's important here in a sec uh, here sort of uh, sorry I'm like having to like move chat around so I can read it <laughs> there's got to be a better way for me to see this but I don't know it right now um, Sorry for bothering. I want to offer you promotions on your channel to use. Plus, just lower that. Nah, sorry, dude. <laughs> Some weird chat. Some weird fucking chat bot shit. But yeah, I'm good on that stuff. I don't pay for promos. <laughs> So that's like a melodic opening again, but it's progressing into the next part. Cool, yeah. So it's just turning. Uh, but yeah, happy to help, Stuart. If you run into any trouble, feel free to pop back into stream. But yeah, recording stuff is always more complex than it seems, and setting up equipment is kind of a pain. Uh, but yeah, once you get it figured out, you're just like, oh man, like it was really that simple. Like it's really just connecting the dots a lot of the time. It's just that the dots are obscured or complex sometimes you know like sometimes it's drivers sometimes it's like system settings sometimes it's daw settings like you just have to like know like the list of like potential problem areas to go through and then it's like really just like a, a simple checklist that you can follow going forward <laughs> this <r> this <laughs> stream was brought to you by raid shadow legends <laughs> Shoot, I wish. <laughs> cool, that's the same accent. Uh, yep. Cool. Okay, so now we finally reach, I think, what is like the climax of this uh, of this initial demo, because um, it seems like all the orchestral stuff is built up to this point, and there's a new like guitar rhythm being introduced. So I'm just gonna mark that as like the bridge, and then I might just put like a climax uh, sub note. That way, I can make sure to make it intense. Uh, the EQ thing is killing me. I watched the Nolly videos also. Also, snare holding strong, my boy. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call this release because coming out of that big climax section, I'm sure that's going to be like. 
But yeah, as far as like EQ, um, I used to do like too much. Oh, sorry, my back's hurting. Uh, I used to do too much uh, at times, and that's what really like fucked me up. Uh, what I like to do nowadays is uh, just try to go about it as simply as I can, like um, get the best possible sound straight from the source, and then from that point, um, I will uh, like tweak the EQ and stuff, and also less EQing in solo and more EQing in like context of the actual mix uh, because I used to like EQ a kick drum and then EQ the snare drum and then EQ the overheads and then when I try to put them all together it was just like a jumbled mess because none of them were cohesive or phase relative to one another um, so by doing that it enables you to create like a bigger picture image of what your stuff actually sounds like and the only time I really do like detail like eq stuff like that is if there's like a particular frequency or something in like a guitar solo or like a lead that has like an annoying ringing frequency and i need to address those issues uh, but for the most part it's typically just across the board i'm just trying to make big moves like as quick as possible <laughs> open kind of section. So it's the turn. No, it's one of these other riffs. Uh. fun. <laughs> I'm looking forward to tracking this. actually change something there because uh, I think it would be more impactful <laughs> bum 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 yeah but uh but yeah songs very cool uh, I really dig it um, oh hey dude thanks for popping in uh, I didn't see you there uh, but yeah songs very cool I really dig the vibe of it it's got like a cool like orchestral kind of ambient vibe to it um he did send me the initial demo with like vocals and like the original drums but i felt like the drums were so wildly inappropriate for the actual song uh so i'm really looking forward to like rewriting everything <clears throat> okay all right just gonna tuck the that chat back in uh, okay cool so next step now that I've gone through is I will open up my region manager and I'll basically just color code everything uh, so intros are white um, I typically do versus green courses blue but since I have just so many different sections and this is going to be 
cut down further. Um, this is basically like step one. Uh, I'm just gonna go by turning riff. So we will color code uh, the same stuff. But yeah, so I'll just color code them. That way when I'm looking at them on my mobile controller, I'll be able to see what corresponding sections are the same. Uh, Thomas, who is this for? What band is it? Um, I'm actually not sure. Uh, the dude's name is Wade. Uh, if I pull up my Spotify, I'll be able to tell you his stuff. Um, here, just one sec. It should be on my like work port portfolio. Uh, I've done a couple other songs with him, and uh, they've done pretty good. Those are way old. That's the old science stuff. Um, Wandering Within. Uh, that's the name of this band. Uh, actually, Wade, the guitar player and like songwriter, um, he's the one that like gets me to play drums on this stuff. And uh, I've played on a couple of these releases, and they always turn out really, really cool when they're done. Um, he gets like a really good vocalist to like do everything and uh yeah he has his own like mix and mastering engineer so i really just handle the drums for him so i just try to give him the best possible files i can and then he just kind of goes off and does his own thing for a few months and uh hits me back up when they're like getting ready to release uh, but yeah i don't know if this song will be released under this name but if it is that is the project that i'm working on uh, so let's go ahead and go the turning V2. We're going to color code these green. Uh <laughs> okay, I was like, there has to be more than one, one turn down rift. Turn down for what? Um... But yeah, so I just labeled them differently, but they are still the same. Cool. All right. That's the same thing. So we'll make that one like a dookie brown or something. Uh, let's see what is supposed to be the chorus, but it might not actually be. I'm going to just label those blue. Uh, the melodic opening, that is like a common common rift i think i think that's like what is tying the whole song together probably so we're color code all of those uh we have the triplets we have open it. cool and just verifying that all of those are indeed the same so we'll just make those all purple um we don't have very many left we have the accent guitars cool so i'll just make those all one color And let's see. I think lastly, we just have like that bridge section. So none of those correspond to anything else in the song. So I will just select them to be random colors. And then my outro is white. And that's basically it. So we have the entire song color coded and organized via their corresponding sections. And this will help me be able to keep track of where I am in the song and also what part I need to be writing for or what I did earlier in the song. Um, hello, baby. Thank you for popping in. Uh, Derek, I use the default Reaper controller app for the iOS. Um, so you basically just set it up. Uh, here, let me pull it up. See if I can get it to work actually. <laughs> uh, RC.refer, cool. Is it gonna work? Is it gonna work? Might have to do some trickery real quick. Okay, I'm back. 
All right, cool. Uh, so, yeah, default controller on iOS. It just looks like a portable Reaper thing. Uh, but you'll see, because I did some of the prep work, I can now tab to the regions via my phone, as well as... And I can also abort the uh, recording sequence if I need to, and it's just it just makes it so much easier so I don't have to be running back and forth between the system. I can just sit on the throne, have this set up and open, and just, like, go to wherever I am in the particular song. Um, okay, the only thing I need to figure out is... I just need to get chat open so I can, like, communicate with you guys. Yeah, so because I'm I'm running the stream through Streamlabs right now, so I'm basic. I don't really know if there's like an easy way for me to get chat pulled up. Uh. Yeah. Okay. So the way this is gonna work going forward, stream will pop up chat on like the entirety of its thing uh s but i will basically just have chat open on uh i'll have the live stream open on my phone as well and i'll just have to view stuff from there but yeah super super handy um it does take a sec to kind of get like set up but uh once you get it all situated it's really really easy um, okay, so real quick, I am going to just pop into the other room, make sure all of the mics are good, and I will just minimize this, actually, so you guys can still see the recording session. Um, and we will unlock, leave chat box there, uh, and I'll basically just scale down Reaper so that you guys can see it while I'm tracking. Cool. Yeah. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and pop into the other room and I will see you guys in there. All right, so you guys let me know if you can still hear me. I think I should be going through... I should be going through OBS, but if you can't hear me, just let me know, and I can get that situated here when I go back. Cool, all right. But yeah, so this is where all the real production value goes into the stream. I have a pretty cool setup. Um, I basically have it to where I can trigger a multitude of cameras now. So I have my overhead. I have the front cam on a slider indeed. Uh, we got the full screen foot. And we have a new side profile cam so I can see you guys. Cool. As well as an automated thing that will just kind of go between all of the different camera feeds. Um, But yeah, so let's just go ahead and I'm going to pop open my, uh, my Safari controller and we'll just try running through the song.
something. <laughs> Yeah, so the whole point of that first one is just to get kind of like ideas of everything. <clears throat> kind of get a vibe and a feel for the material and also to see if all of the microphones are working. Uh, so, hey, what's up, Jordan? Thanks for popping back in, dude. Just trying to make... I think I'm missing one. Yeah, so I'm basically just trying to keep an eye on chat while I'm uh, <laughs> while I'm also doing all of this stuff. And uh, let's see. Auto rotates angles. Yeah, so basically I created a script um, on my stream deck to be able to automate all of the camera switching. Uh, so really quick, I'm just gonna pop back into the other room. I'm just gonna verify all of the microphones are actually being like sent to the system and then we'll individually write each section of the song, I guess. Okay, small issue.
cool just gonna pop back over here uh, having some issues with my Tom 1 and Tom 3 for whatever reason they're just not even if I max them out there's no signal coming through so let's see what the issue is And this is always a fun part of recording as well, all the troubleshooting. <laughs> Basically just going to pop a panel off and see if the issue is with my patch bay. Because that's what it has been as of late. I need to get a new patch bay, it's super annoying. <coughs> But to access it, I have to remove a patch bay. All right. Cool. Now, Jesus Christ, so much dust. All right. And we'll duck out chat for a sec. Oh, 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 oh there we go. Something happened. Oh, Lord. Sorry, guys. Okay, so that explains that issue. I think my, I installed a new drawer the other day and uh, I think that affected the, uh, the connection a little bit. So let me go verify. Tom 3 is still out, so I need to correct that. Yeah, it's just not connecting. There we go. All right, should be set now. All right, back to the computer, or back to the drum set, I mean. All right, cool. So I'll just delete all of that. And let's just hide the Reaper display for now. Cool. Hey, what's up, Ray? Thanks for popping in, dude. All right, I'll be back behind the kit in just a sec. All 
right, all my toms should be working now as well. All right. Sweet. Thanks, Ray. Some cool guy I know gave it to me. <laughs> but yeah, hope you guys are having fun. I know this isn't the... <laughs> it's definitely not the most entertaining stream unless you're into recording and writing stuff. Uh, but, you know, it's fun for me. I do this for a living. I figured I would include it and, uh, you know, show people a little something about stuff. is that this trigger is like annoyingly you guys can't hear it because i have it routed to myself but it is like triggering annoyingly much so <laughs> it's really getting annoying um but okay so now that i've sorted out all the technical issues and we've done all the prep work in the other room i can now just control the stream through my phone so let's just start it off from the top want a you know symbol swell build kind of thing going on for that first piece I think that'll work. Let's go ahead and try that out. And uh, real quick, I have to run back into the other room again. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I forgot to turn on my pre-roll. All right, sorry guys. I also addressed, I felt like my uh, iOS was way too low on my front cam, so I got that situated as well. Cool, need to get a new adapter. Phone adapter is like nothing. 
There we go. All right, let's try it out. So, symbol swallow into Tom's. I think I like that, but I think I can do something better. I think I need to start it less intensely. That way I have more room to build into it. to move into something as it like develops further i need to move it to like a ride or something that so maybe oh, something like that we'll figure it out let's try it out sense progression wise I think I need to bring it back to the I think that's what's gonna make sense uh, so let's try that out um... big crash into that or something like that i don't know but it definitely needs to like wind back down that way the turn down is a little bit more intense uh and then i can open it back up for the melodic section
big gigantic crash thing for that melodic opening the sense to me especially coming out of so much like tom progression and pullback uh yeah because going to like the 18 inch crash just doesn't it's it just doesn't feel as impactful it's a little bit too bright it'll be better for like a more dense section later in the song so I think for this one, I'm just going to try to left hand ride crash it and just see how that goes. Okay, let's just see. Uh, we'll just see, I guess, how that one feels. Try that again. Okay, so we've got a bunch of new riffs coming up. So we have that melodic open section. Yeah, because for whatever reason, that riff just doesn't feel right with like a cymbal or like a groove behind it. I think it just needs to continue being like Tom stuff. But I'm trying to figure out a way to make the Tom stuff feel like it's not just the exact same groove. So I'm going to try to just cement it with... Maybe I'll try to cement it with like a kick pattern underneath or something. I just did that. I feel like makes it different enough to be its own new thing, uh, but could necessarily be its own. Nice to hear what is going on. That sounds sick. Thanks for popping in, dude. Uh, a couple people earlier were actually asking who it was, so I showed them your uh, Spotify page. I hope that's all right. But yeah. Trying a, trying a couple different variations. Uh, the song basically builds to that bridge section, so I'm trying to give you enough parts to be able to like mix it up and kind of chop it up the way that you need.
Uh, but so far, let's see. But I think I like that. I don't think this turning riff has come up yet, so I'm going to give it something similar to the melodic part. I think I might try to go more upbeat on this one because the melodic section opening comes right after it, so that'll be like a halftime thing. natural so that was kind of cool I might keep parts of that but yeah no worries dude I had some technical difficulties and stuff to set up so you I think feel like you came at the right time first half of stream was just me getting the session set up and ready for tracking
landed with it. <laughs> oh, I got way off time on that. like it's building it feels like it's getting bigger and busier which is my was my goal with it so let's go ahead and try this accent section uh let me reset the switcher our turning riffs. What do I have for the first turn down? Cool. So maybe I'll reintroduce that. Um... Yeah, I, I also know that the guitar demos are uh, a little bit ahead, so I'm trying to like lock into the click instead. So it's going to sound a little funky at times. Uh, also, I think I missed a Twitch. I think I missed a Twitch subscriber. Sorry if I did. Uh, trying to. Okay, I didn't. Cool. All right, all set. But yeah, I have my phone down here, so I'm like trying to manage both the stream as well as popping into chat every now and then. So let's just continue. <laughs> I'm gonna try an alternate version of that where I just like lock in with the guitar so it'll just be.
well. Really quick, we have that turning down rift and the like chorus kind of coming back. So uh, let's just move. I just have to basically accent every downbeat with a crash or china and then leave it open for the melodic section that comes in shortly afterwards. I want to do something similar, but a variation of it. That was my, my happy accident. My happy accident. -a. My second rack tom thing. So let's see if I can do something like that, but build on it so it's a little bit different. See what I did there. All right, so just a crash again, crash section. Let's go back to that. Uh, excuse me, uh, but yeah, so we just have a Should be totally fine. Let's try it out.
So I definitely want to ramp that up a little bit more. And then we're in the... It's like a that full-on triplet groove while also having the orchestration behind it. But will still feel appropriate, but let's just get the melodic section, I guess. I just think I need to clean it up. <laughs>
like that. I can definitely clean up. Um, I can definitely clean up the accent section as well as the blast section. But we're doing good. We're doing good. I think we're like 75% of the way through the song. I guess I didn't bring my water in here. But yeah, we're about 75% of the way through the song, so we're making good progress. Uh, let's just see if I can muscle it out. Muscle out the last like 10%. Let me pop in a chat, make sure nobody's said anything. Thanks, dude. <laughs> that progression into the blast is... Yeah, dude, I really like... I feel like I can just nail it better. I want to do something, like, to really set it off, you know? Because that part's, like, so so big production-wise. I want to make sure that the drums encapsulate that vibe as well. So let's try it out. I'll take it from the accents. <laughs> a little bit. either pick one or the other. Uh...
Let's try it again. We'll get this. We'll get this. It's going to be so great when we do. My body was like, I don't know if I'm going to do dual foot or single foot blast. <laughs> That's one of those sections that I'm just going to have to review on the system side to see if I nailed it at any point. Uh, but I know now I at least have two takes that are clean that I just played to the click. So if I need to splice in a spot, then that should be fine. Uh, so let's do... <laughs> Bum, bum, bah. So this is a one-off riff. We haven't used it anywhere. So maybe I'll use China. I haven't used China for a groove yet. <laughs>
about the song. The Toms just called to me on this one, and I don't ever regularly make most songs like Tom heavy. Uh, but something about Wade's material just always has me doing like interesting, uh, interesting grooves. fits the part that I don't know I just it's just tripping me up
Excellent. We did it, guys. We got through the entire song. I'm gonna put you guys on a waiting screen real quick. I'm gonna go back into the other room and we're gonna do take selection together. And uh, if I have time, I'll edit. If not, I'll do that on my own time. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for hanging in there. Uh, I will see you back here in just a sec. Let me start, wait, cool. Hey, what's up, guys? I I am back. Cool. So, real quick, let me get Reaper back up. Uh, I gotta unlock it real quick. Nope, that's my webcam. All right. I'll just pop that there, and shaboom. Sweet. Damn it. Okay. Undo that. All right, cool. Yeah, so we're just going to do take selection real quick, and then I will get out of here. Uh, all right, we'll lock the display, and we'll move me here. And we will move chat as well. That way you guys can not obscure me. Yeah, so I'll just put you guys up here in this corner. And yeah, so... I will be muting all of these, or uh, disabling all of these, so none of these are armed for recording anymore. And now we'll basically do do what I just did together with you guys. Uh, I'm just gonna mute my send, and we will get the stream send to make sure that the volume's real. <laughs> Cool. So, everything's going good so far. 
Oh man, it's hard to hard to play. <laughs> Hard to play and do stuff. I think I'm going to just chill out for a sec. Hey, what's up, Steven? I didn't see you pop in, dude. Sorry. Um, if you're still there, hi. <laughs> Thanks for popping in, dude. Uh, but yeah, got everything done. Uh, Derek, if you pop in to see the stream later, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, but yeah, so I'll just go ahead and do take selection. So basically what that means is... I have to go through all of these individual pieces and just pick out which ones I'm actually going to keep. And from that point, we will uh, figure out what we actually want to keep on the song. So let's just make these bigger. And psh, psh, psh. oh, great. None of them. Nothing grouped together. So let me do that real quick. I'm just going to go through at least the first couple. No, I'm, I may as well just do it for the entire song. That way I don't have to worry about it. Uh, but yeah, so this is basically what I do on a regular basis uh, when people ask me to play drums on their songs. Uh, I will just set it up in Reaper, do all my back-end stuff, and then just spend a little while um, either recording or writing parts. Uh, so in Wade's instance, he did have original drums, but he didn't want me to use any of them so I just had free reign to come up with stuff and in those instances it takes a little bit longer because obviously I'm just trying out a bunch of different stuff um, when I'm working with like Super Monster Party uh, if Ray is still in here uh, he typically sends me songs that already have drums written to them uh, so that makes it a little bit easier for me because I can just uh, I can just like kind of do my own interpretation of said parts. So it makes it a little bit easier in some aspects and a little bit more challenging in others because obviously um, not everyone is going to write parts the same. And sometimes people hit me with like really ridiculously sounding uh, drum parts that they expect me to play. And uh, don't get me wrong, I've worked very hard at my drumming to be able to play most things uh, with no problem. But I still occasionally get hit with something that's like a, like an octopus having to play drums, and in those instances, it is. Uh, <laughs> I have to just kind of figure out what I can do, to kind of like appease, uh, both myself creatively and also uh, the person, or the people who write the original parts. Because obviously, if they want like a crazy blast or something wild, um, I definitely want to give them something like in that similar vein that I am capable of. Uh, but yeah, it's just kind of a mix of stuff. Uh, it really just depends on the band and the part and the music overall. Because obviously if something is uh, weird sounding or like works in one setting but not another, uh, I definitely want to make that judgment call for people. Uh, but so far, so good. Everything looks pretty good. It doesn't look like any of the mics dropped out or anything. <laughs> I've already got this crazy blast section that I know is going to need extensive editing. Uh, and yeah, so I try my best to play everything on the grid as well. You'll see that a lot of the stuff is like pretty close. Uh, if I got my, my additional grids out, uh, I'm sure it would be even tighter. Uh, like you'd be able to discern how tight it is uh, for the subdivision groups. Uh, but for the most part, I try to just nail it as close as I can so I don't have to struggle on the editing side. Uh, and I can already see that because I was playing to the the track, it's a little bit ahead, which is totally fine because uh, Wade said that he was going to be re-recording instrumentation anyways. Uh, so I will just give him the tightest drum performance that I can. That way everything else has a solid foundation to build on on top. And that's the end of the song. So next thing I will do is I'll just highlight everything and shift delete. That will remove all of the empty take lanes and make it way easier for me to be able to pick out parts. Uh, so without further ado. Oh, 
I will also highlight everything and so that I don't have to do a million crossfades later I'll just do a big crossfade now across all of the lanes and that will crossfade everything so now I can just adjust that crossfade a lot quicker <laughs> All right, all that looks pretty good. <clears throat> all right, dude, thanks for watching, Wade. I appreciate you stopping in, dude. Glad you got to see part of it. Uh, I'd love to do more of these in the future um, if anybody is interested in this kind of stuff. Otherwise, I'll just move them over to a, a separate YouTube channel that's like more recording centric. <laughs> you recorded drums for already but adding at least one other track <laughs> so we'll probably have you record re-record all of it <laughs> yeah dude just let me know i'm always happy to i'm always happy to track stuff and if you guys want to participate on stream as well uh this because this concept was kind of born out of like two necessities it was like one, it helps speed up the process for me writing and like going back and forth with people. So like if they want to just hang out on stream while I'm doing it and uh, like make suggestions or like let me know if stuff sounds cool or not, um, that helps tremendously. Uh, but also to, uh, you know, just so I'm a little bit more socially present because <laughs> a lot of this kind of stuff I typically just will be in here doing it by myself. So if people are actually interested or like want to just ask something while I'm working, um, it's kind of like a two birds, one stone kind of thing. Cause I would be here kind of just working by myself, uh, listening to podcasts anyways. <laughs> There's some, okay, I see what's going on. I'm hitting, I'm hitting the toms at the same time as the chinas. too crazy. Yeah, 
So I just sped up a little bit on that fill. Not a big deal. We can go. Popping in, dude. Oh, just got through the exhausting ordeal of uh, <laughs> recording to this entire song. Uh, so yeah, so now I'm doing take selection. I'm kind of just like going through uh, the song and picking out all the pieces that I actually want. And uh, from this point, like songwriting wise the song will be done uh for me and then i'll just go through and like edit everything is I'm just going to drag the entire demo back a little bit just to make it a bit easier. But yeah, so uh, I had a couple people ask me uh, over the last couple of weeks to like stream my work sessions. And uh, to be honest, I'm just in here by myself a lot of the time. So um, I just got permission from uh, Wade, the guitarist who wrote the backing instrumentation. Uh, to make sure that was cool and uh, yeah going forward I think I'm gonna be doing this um, it is a little bit tiring uh, to stream and also write and do everything on the spot uh, but you know I'm trying uh. So what 
have you been up to, Fox? You know what would be a fun idea? Make like a general, make like a super general song, then ask your community to submit vocals or something. Yeah, they do that. Actually, would be pretty fun. <laughs> I don't know how many people in the community have like the capabilities to record themselves. Um, I did something kind of like that a long time ago. Um, I basically asked the community to like submit their own original like guitar riffs and like instrumentation and then I basically just wrote drums and like played them uh or actually it was the inverse of that I supplied them with like an empty drum beat groove and then a bunch of people like submitted their own kind of interpretations of like what they thought would like go with the drums uh, afterwards um it I only did it once uh because it was such a it was such a pain to like coordinate all that stuff but it was a lot of fun uh to hear what everybody had come up with so i think it would uh, be something cool to do again maybe now that i'm like have a little bit more systems in place uh to be able to like edit videos and all that kind of stuff the point though right get some someone using airpods versus like a sure microphone yeah i guess that yeah that would be kind of cool i can maybe talk to my buddy ray um, mr raymond charles uh who just dropped his album yesterday he's a great guitarist and songwriter uh i think he might be interested in that idea maybe i can have him maybe he and i can like collaborate on a like instrumentation track and then we'll just have a bunch of people um throw vocals on top i think that might be Drop a link uh, to the like experiment that I did. Um, here, let me see if I can find it for you real quick. <clears throat> As for my buddy Ray's thing, he's a. Uh, let me see if I can find it for you. Content. It was a while back, if I remember right. I think it was like maybe 2019. It must have been, yeah. Yeah. The video didn't, at the time, uh, I mean, I don't usually care about this kind of stuff anyways. Uh, but it definitely is like uh, sometimes a, a factor of like why I don't do stuff again because it's just like such a mountain of work. And if, like, not a ton of people watch it, then uh, it doesn't really give me, the, like, a whole lot of reason to do it again if, I, if it was, like, such a chore for me. But uh, this is the, um, this is people, like, submitted, people's submissions over my drumming. Um, and that concept was a lot of fun. It was just, like, I should have just been more clear about, like, the deliverables because it was kind of like a pain to sort through all of that stuff and like, unify it on my end as well.
So far, so good. But yeah, I definitely think a a singer version of it would be a little bit easier to coordinate. Um, people would definitely uh, have less of a barrier to entry, you know? Like, when I did it, I was basically asking people to have the capabilities to record themselves and send over something halfway decent, you know, which is, like, a lot bigger of a barrier, especially, like, three or four years ago, um, especially for, like, guitarists and instrumentalists. Um, but nowadays, that'd be, like... It's like, there's way more stuff to That's what I figure. You don't need a studio or a good, you don't need a studio interface for a good voice to work magic, right? Yeah, 100%. Like, I, there's, <clears throat> what are you going for with the strings added in? Uh, it's actually not my track. So the instrumentalist, uh, uh, Wade, who I think just left a sec ago, um, he basically wrote this song, uh, finished it. That looks good. I'm obviously going to have to time align it, but uh, it's fine. Uh, so for the strings, um, yeah, so Wade, uh, Wade is the one who like programmed and wrote all of these, and uh, the strings are just uh, part of the instrumental that um, kind of helps build the song along uh, because like we're at the climax right now, but it's basically like three minutes of build up. Some of the guitar riffs come back in the progression, uh, but the strings are kind of what is like really the overall feel of the song. So as they get more busy and more intricate, um, they kind of help develop the song further. So it's kind of like a cool addition. Um, usually people will have trouble writing these kind of things. Um, so these are like pretty well done. Like what, first off, they're in key, which is like a huge thing. A lot of people just write keys and like or uh uh strings and stuff in the wrong key so it just sounds wonky um so these are all pretty good and what wade is going to do from this point after i finish it is he's going to chop the song down further and really try to figure out um what needs to stay because in its current state the song is a little bit long it's about five minutes and uh the way it's worked in the past is he'll basically give me like a rough outline of a song i will record a bunch of parts to it and then he will take those parts and kind of rearrange them and tweak them uh, into what he feels is a more appropriate, like, final version of the song.
Strong sensation of the buildup. It's given like primordial vibes with the energy. Solemn, silent anger in a way. Maybe struggle. Yeah, it definitely seems so. Uh, a lot of Wade's material is like very dark, uh, like melodically, um, which is really cool. And uh, I feel like it leaves a lot of like open interpretation for people to kind of put their own emotions on top, which is, you know, it's always a good thing. You can hear me start to kind of drift the blast right there. It shouldn't be that off time. Uh, I'll try to salvage this in post, uh, but I'm like close enough to where I think I can make this whole thing work. Just got to get that snare drum to be where it actually needs to be. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to just, uh, I'm probably going to tweak the demo so that it lines up with the finalized drums so it doesn't sound all wonky. So I think I found the ending, but I don't have like a good middle bit. Yeah, that's 
the only thing I have. this I'm gonna take that little section and I'm gonna just crossfade that That's a Almost there. Almost. I think maybe I'm a beat off. I was just a beat off. I have to. So I think what I'm going to do when I've. Well, now that I've done take selection, everything is open. Okay, so up to that point, that is the reset. So we have to make all of this make yeah and i think it's just because that is too fast i played that full So now that we have all that, I'm just going to glue. Actually, I never do this here. We're going to duplicate the entire thing because you never know when you're going to need to come back. All my original takes are still there, intact, and I'm going to make a unedited drum bus. And that one gets to stay the way it is forever. And this one is going to be our editing one. So I'm going to glue all of these together, make one cohesive track, and then... Uh, I don't know if I'll edit this on stream because I'm kind of tired. <laughs> but uh, either way, um, we now have a completed finished track. And then from this point, I just need to edit everything and go through it. Yeah, big brain time. So basically just kick and snare, duplicate both of those. Uh, we're going to create a parent folder is what they're called on Reaper. Uh, basically just dragging these into here gonna remove all the effects make these unison normalize both and we're going to I don't care that it's clipping and stuff because it's not actually gonna be used I'm just using it to be a guide for the edits so let's see if I can do this quickly uh, that way I don't have to do this at home and uh, yeah, so we're gonna change this to splice. We're gonna splice every single region. 
And since the demo's off time, we're just going to line it up by eye. And... Sweet, okay. And then I just like to use the guide up here on the top of Reaper. Uh, hey, what's up, Eli? Thanks for popping in, dude. We're getting near the end of stream. I'm just going to try to wrap up this drum edit real quick. So you guys can basically watch the entire process start to finish of how I recorded drums for this song. Um, if you've been here the entire time, thanks for hanging out. But yeah, so it's a lot of this. It's a lot of me dragging stuff around. Uh, me trying to figure out what needs to go where. And then we'll just keep going. I like to try to go quick. If something's not perfect, that's okay. I will, I will like sit down and actually do like a second pass. Uh, so this pass is just about speed, 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 zoom, zoom, and just trying to get through it. And you know, getting blue balled from the build up section, repeating over and over. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, what software are you using? I am using Reaper, Kukos Reaper. I've been a big fan of this since I started using it uh, like 12 years ago, and I've just stuck with it. I really like it. I've tried to do sessions in Pro Tools, and it just uh, just never never happens. You know, so it's a very buggy software, and I don't like the subscription-only model now, and it's just stupid. Like, I, I have an understanding and a working knowledge in it but it is not my preferred DAW. I basically just know enough to be able to work out of other studios if I ever need to. Uh, but I will always, always, always request people to send me their projects in Reaper because it's just, I just like the workflow. Guess I'll just have to listen to it on release. <laughs> yeah, here, once we get the edit wrapped, um, I'll try to just like line the demo up sort of and uh, we'll see if it works. Uh, cause that's always my favorite part when it's like done and <laughs> you know, I get to just listen back to it. I don't have to worry about playing it anymore. But yeah, it's like a ton of buildup for like a really cool midsection. And, uh, I'm really excited to see what Wade does with it. Like I'm always surprised with how much the songs transform when he gets his hands on them. And like he sent me stuff as like bare bones as like a single guitar before and he'll like come back at me with like this like really cool commercial sounding release i'm like holy crap like you actually did it <laughs> which is not a feat i can say oh thanks so thank you so much fox <laughs> yeah dude i'm trying to uh stream a little bit more often you know i'm trying to really stick to that like at least once a week um my buddy Ray, who I mentioned just a sec ago, um, he's also a content creator on YouTube, uh, and he does like guitar based stuff, but, um, he, he has like a just really strict schedule of like, you know, like a, one piece of content a day, uh, which is like very admirable. I really want to get to that point. I really want to get to the point where I can like put out a piece of content every single day. I get lucky, but I work every day, so can. So can't always catch things. Yeah, dude, no worries. Um, the live streams are fun. Would be nice to have that much content coming out, but it's hard. I know. Also, hi, Dawson. Thanks for popping in, dude. Um, but yeah, like the... Uh, the content creation aspect of it is very difficult at times, especially when you don't really know what to do, you know, um, because it's as easy as just like getting your phone out and like using any of the like many AI generated like content or like programs like a uh, cap cuts, a really good one on mobile phone. Uh, uh, Chels actually told me about that one. It's a good software for like just completely editing videos on phone. It has like a green screen keyer and, uh, you can get all like those cool, funny, trending, like, uh, like green screen cats and stuff. And uh, that's, it's a really fun thing to be able to like knock out quickly from your phone. You don't need like a extensive rig. 
But uh, for like music stuff, it's always been hard for me personally uh, because I feel like so torn in so many different directions of like, should I be doing drumming stuff? Should I be doing like recording stuff? Should I be like, like trying to promote myself in like various means and stuff? And uh, honestly, I just like to do what's fun for me.